This is Tamara from MoogliBlog.com, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to make the water lily throw, which is a free pattern you'll find on MoogliBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you will find both the right and left-handed tutorials, as well as a link out to the written pattern with the other video tutorials that I'll mention today, and links to all the supplies you need. For this pattern, I used Red Heart with Love in six different colors. I based my color choices off the Water Lily colorway, which is the multi that you can see here in the center. You'll also need a USK hook, which is a 6.5 millimeter. This one is by Brittany. And you'll also want to use some stitch markers. My personal favorites are by Clover. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here let's take another quick look at the finished Water Lily throw. You can see I started in the center with my multicolor, the Water Lily colorway, of course, you can use whichever color you like, but that's where I pulled all the other colors from then. I've got the yellow worked after that, then the green, then the blue, then the purple, then just a little bit of tan, and then it repeats on out. So while this pattern has 45 rows and most of them are slightly distinctive, there are some repeats and I will definitely cover all the techniques we'll use as we make the repeats of this pattern. Okay, so to begin round one of the Water Lily Throw, we're going to begin with a magic circle. I have a separate tutorial for the magic circle linked at this tutorial and on the pattern and it's on YouTube if you don't know how to make one of those. So with the magic circle on my finger, I'm going to start with a chain of two, one and two, and those two chains will not count as a stitch. Then I'm going to make 12 double, double crochets right into the ring. And I want to make sure that I work over that tail end as well so that I can close up that ring when I'm all done. So round one is just very simply 12 double crochets worked into a magic ring. So I will see you when we've got 12 double crochets made. All right, so I've made my 12 double crochets for round one so I can take the tail from my magic circle close that right up. When I weave it in, I'll be sure to go both directions with my yarn needle to really lock that in. And then I can just finish up round one with a slip stitch in the top of that first double crochet that I made. So at the end of round one, or excuse me, row, yes, round one, I was going back and forth there. At the end of round one, you should have 12 double crochets. Now we're ready to begin round two. We're going to stick with our color A here. Again, we're going to start with a chain two that does not count as a stitch. Then we're going to make a cluster in the first stitch. And a cluster is one of those stitches that can have a different meaning just depending on which pattern you're using. So you always need to check the special stitches. For this pattern, a cluster is a double crochet, two together, but with both legs of it worked into the same stitch. So you're not actually decreasing anything. So let's do that together. I'm going to yarn over and go right into that first stitch because we've got that chain two that doesn't count as a stitch. Then I will yarn over and stop with two loops left on my hook, yarn over again, go back into that same stitch, pull through two, and then when I've got three loops left on the hook, that's when I'll yarn over and pull through all three to finish my first cluster. Then I'm going to chain one and do it again. I will cluster in the next stitch and then chain one, and that's my repeat all around. So that's what we'll do in each stitch of this round. So at the end of round two, we'll have 12 clusters and 12 chain ones. So let's make this one again together. You can see I yarned over and went into the next stitch and pulled up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over again, go back into that same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through three to finish. Then don't forget that chain one and do it again. So when we get to the end of round two, I'll join to the top of that first cluster I made and we'll have 12 clusters and 12 chain ones. So I'll see you at the end of round two. Okay, so here I am at the end of round two. I've got 12 cluster stitches and 12 chain ones in between. One, of course, in between each cluster stitch. So I just need to join to the top of that first cluster to finish off, like so. And then we're going to continue with color A here for round three. Okay, so let's begin round three. I'm going to start again with a chain two, and then I'm going to double crochet in the first stitch, so right in that first cluster that we joined to, and then I will work two double crochets in the chain one space. One and two, whoops, <laughs> let me try that again. There we go, and that's our repeat. One double crochet in the next stitch, and two double crochets in the next chain one space. So by the time I get all the way to the end of round three, I will have 36 double crochets 
made. So I will see you at the end of round three. Okay, so I've finished up round three with our 36 double crochets and it's time to begin round four. To begin round four, we slip stitch into the next stitch and then chain two, one and two. Then we're going to begin with a cluster right in that stitch that we slip stitched to. So that's the same sort of cluster we made before. A double crochet two together, but with both of those legs worked into the same stitch. So there's no actual decrease. Then we're going to chain one, then cluster in the next stitch, just as we did before. Then chain one again, and then this time we're going to skip the next stitch and begin our repeat again. So that repeat goes, cluster in the next stitch, chain one, cluster in the stitch after that, chain one, and then skip the next stitch and start again. So I'm going to continue working all the way around for round four, and when you get to the end of round four, you should have 24 clusters and 24 chain ones. So I will see you at the end of round four. All right, and here we are at the end of round four. I have slip stitched to the first cluster that I made, and we now have 24 clusters. If it helps, I like to think of them as 12 little pairs with a space in between. Now we're ready to begin round five, which is the last one we'll make with our color A before we switch colors. So to begin, we'll start again with a chain two, and then I am going to double crochet right in that first stitch, right in that first cluster stitch made. There we go. Then two double crochets in the next chain one space. So there's one and two. And then double crochet in the next stitch. And double crochet in the next chain space. And that was our first little one. So after that, we can begin the repeat that will carry us through the rest of the round. So we double crochet in the next stitch. Two double crochets in the next chain one space. Double crochet in the next stitch. And double crochet in the next chain space. So if we break that out, our repeat is double crochet in the next stitch two double crochets in the chain space, double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next chain space. So that right there is our increase for this round. So we're just going to repeat that set of stitches all the way around round five until we have 60 stitches total. At the end there, then we will break the yarn and get ready for our color B. So I will see you at the end of round five. All right, so here we are at the end of round five. You can see I have all my double crochets made and I'm ready to join to finish off the round. I've also gone ahead and cut this yarn because this is our last round for now with this color. So when you go to join, you can do it the usual way with a slip stitch right in that first stitch you made and then just of course break your yarn and finish it off. Or you can use a yarn needle which some people prefer to finish off. Uh, that's called a seamless join or seamless finishing if you wanna look that up. But for now, for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off with a slip stitch and then I'll just sort of finish off my yarn here. And then I'll weave in that end later. Then I'm ready to begin our color B. Okay, so to begin round six, I've picked up my color B, which for me is the corn silk colorway. I'm going to go ahead and join it with a slip stitch to the very first stitch of the previous round. So I can tell that's the one I joined to to finish off the previous round. So I will just get my hook in there and make a little slip stitch and tug that down tight. And now it's joined right to that very first stitch. So now I am going to front post treble crochet in the round four cluster directly below. So this is round six that we're making right now. So this is round five and this is round four. So this is the cluster directly below. So to make a front post treble crochet, I'm going to yarn over on my hook twice then I'm going to go around the cluster. And here you've got a choice. This is our first cluster, so we've got a chain two there. Sometimes I like to go around both, ignoring that chain two since it's not a stitch. 
Sometimes I like to go around just the cluster. So you can try it both ways and see which works best for you and which look you prefer. Um, sometimes it just depends on how the colors have wound up laying um, as you made your stitches. So like I say, try it both ways and decide which look you prefer. I'm just going to keep going around both here for the sake of time. And then I will make my front post treble crochet. We just yarn over and pull through two at a time. There we go. And work our way up. So that is the first stitch of round six. Then we are going to back loop only single crochet in the next two stitches. So since we worked around this cluster, we're not going to go into that first stitch that we joined to, that's considered worked. Come over here to the next stitch and go under the back loop only. And if you're not familiar again with front loop, back loop, I do have a separate tutorial for this, but it's always relative to the crocheter. So the back loop of those top two loops is always the one furthest away from you. So we just go under just that loop and make a single crochet. There we are, and then we do the same thing in the next stitch. Then we make another front post treble crochet under the cluster in round four directly below. So we yarn over twice, jump down to that cluster, go all the way around it, pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that stitch is done. Then we go to the next stitch. Remember, we don't wanna work into the top of the stitch behind this one, that one's considered done. We come over to the next one and we make two back loop only single crochets in that stitch. So there's one and two. And then we're ready to begin our repeat again. Yarn over twice and make a front post treble crochet around that next cluster. Remember we're jumping down two rows to get around there. There we go. Then we back loop only single crochet in the next two stitches. Then we front post treble around the next cluster. And then we back loop only single crochet twice in the next stitch. So one and two. And that is our repeat that will take us all the way around round six. So I'm gonna make a few more of those and we'll see you when we're ready for round seven. All right, and here we are at the end of round six. You should have 72 total stitches worked around. You should have a front post treble crochet worked around each cluster stitch from round four and two back loop only single crochets in between each of those post stitches. After that, we're ready, ready to begin round seven, which will continue with color B. Now we're ready to begin round seven. Round seven is pretty simple. We're going to start with a chain one and then we're going to half double crochet right in that very first stitch. Then we half double crochet in the next stitch. And then we chain one. And after that, we're ready to begin the repeat that's going to take us most of the way around again. And the repeat goes like this. We half double crochet in the next three stitches. So we're not skipping anything. We half double crochet in the next three stitches. So there's one, two, and there's three. Then we chain one and repeat again. Half double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and chain one. So those three stitches should be worked over the stitch before the, treble, the front post stitch, into the front post stitch, and then the stitch after the front post stitch and then a chain one and go again. So we're just going to repeat that all the way around, but since we began with just two stitches, we'll end with a half double crochet in that stitch right before and then we join. So we've got our group of three there. So we're going to continue this all the way around and I will see you at the end of round seven where we'll be ready to break color B and begin our color C. All right, and here we are at the end of round seven. I finished with a half double crochet in that last stitch and then joined to the first half double crochet made. So we've got that all finished off and we're ready to join color C, which for me was the lettuce colorway. Now for this one, I'm going to join to any chain one space with a double crochet. So remember we had those chain one spaces in between our half double crochets every, every three or so. And this is where I like to move. You can see up here is where we've had that first row 
of our rounds up till now, I like to go ahead and turn the blanket a little bit and join somewhere else. This keeps all our first stitches from lining up and creating a visual line that will stand out. This will hide it and just make it seem that little bit more round and a little bit more polished. So to join with a double crochet, this is also known as a standing double crochet. And again, I have a separate tutorial for this on the page. But what I'm going to do is hold on to the end of the yarn with my non-hook hand, or rather with my hook hand, but my non-hook fingers, the ones that aren't holding the hook. Then I'm going to yarn over twice on my hook, one and two. Find that first half double crochet that I wanna to join to there. It should be right in between any two post stitches there, easy enough to find. Go into that chain one space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through that loop and sort of behind the one that's in my hand. I'm going to continue holding on to this though while I make the next stitch. Then I'll be able to let go of it and it will hold it in place. So the next stitch is two more half double, or excuse me, two more double crochets into that same chain one space. So easy enough, I'll yarn over, go right back in that chain one space, make a double crochet and then do it again. And with that, I can let go of that tail end right there. There we are. And that first double crochet will be rating, waiting right there for me when I come around. Now to make it a little bit easier to join into, I'm going to grab a stitch marker and I'm going to put that stitch marker under the first loop of that first stitch and the loop here that I was hold, sort of holding in my hand and that will be the second loop that I work under when I join. If I just sort of pull it out straight there, that will make it a little bit easier to find the top of that stitch when I come all the way around to join. So to continue with round eight, we are going to make a front post treble in the next round six post stitch. So this is round eight we're making, so this is round seven, so this must be round six. So we're going to yarn over twice for a front post treble, and then we jump all the way down here, just come right behind that post with our hook, pull up our loop, and finish the stitch, pulling through two loops at a time, like so. Then we can begin our repeat that starts with the asterisk in the written pattern three double crochets in the next chain one space. So we skip over all these half double crochets back here. We're just going to work into this chain space with three double crochets. One, two, three, and then we make another front post treble around the next post stitch that's two rows below. So this round should go pretty quickly. And then I'm ready to begin the repeat again three double crochets in that next chain one space. So I will see you when we get to the end of round eight. In fact, at the end of round eight, we'll be breaking our color C. This is the only round we use this one for until we get, get to it again later in the pattern. And then we'll be ready for round nine with color D. So I'll see you there. All right, and here we are finished with round eight. We've got three double crochets in each chain one space and a front post treble worked around each of the front post trebles that are two rows below. So we're ready to begin round nine and I've got color D which is iced aqua for that one. Okay, so to begin round nine, we want to join color D to any center double crochet with a single crochet. There, found my end. So what we want to do is again, this is an opportunity to turn a little bit and keep our seams from lining up. So we want to find a center double crochet. So out of those, that group of three, this one's the center one. And I'm going to join to that one with a single crochet. This is similar to where we just joined with a double crochet and it's called a single, a standing single crochet, but we're going to start it a little differently. This one I like to start with the slip knot right on my hook. And then I will go into that center double crochet, pull up a loop, and then I can yarn over and pull through two to go ahead and finish the stitch. Then we can continue with the rest of our round. Next, we're going to work a front post double crochet, two single crochets, and another front post double crochet all around this next post stitch. So you can see I've yarned over. I'll come right over to this post stitch and go right behind it, pull up my loop, and finish my front post double crochet. Then I am going to make two single crochets right in the top of this post stitch. So normally we would say this had already been worked into, but we're working a bunch of stitches into this stitch. So I'm going to go under the top two loops and make two single crochets. So there's one, and then go in again and make a second one, that's two. Then we're going to front post double crochet around that same post stitch again. So I yarn over and go 
just right behind the post again, just right below the loops that we've already made around it. Pull up a loop, yarn over, and finish off the stitch. So we've worked four stitches all in around or into that post stitch. Next, we need to make a single crochet in the next center double crochet. So we've got our group of three here, find that center one again, and make a single crochet right in there. Then we're ready to begin again. This is where we start, or where we continue to start each one of these repeats for round nine. Front post double crochet around the next post stitch. Two single crochets worked into the top of that same post stitch. One, two, another front post double crochet worked around that post stitch. And then a single crochet right in the center of the next group of three. So that right there is our repeat for round nine. So I'll continue that all the way around and join. At the end of round nine, you should have a total of 120 stitches. So I'll see you when we get there. All right, and here we are at the end of round nine. You can see we've got a post stitch, two single crochets, and another post stitch worked around each post stitch down there, and then a single crochet in the center of each set of three. Come all the way around and join to that first single crochet I've made, so it's time to begin round 10. So for round 10, we're just going to start with a chain one, and then we're going to front post double crochet two together around the previous and next post stitches. So let's work through that together here. I'm going to yarn over just once, because it's a front post double crochet two together. Then I'm going to look for the previous post stitch, which is this one right here. The second one worked around that one. So I'm going to go around it with my hook from front to back there, pull up my loop, yarn over, pull through two, stop with two loops left on the hook, then I'll yarn over again. I'm going to find the next post stitch, so the first one of this pair all the way over here, and I want to go behind that post stitch, pull through two, and then when I've got three loops left on the hook, I yarn over and pull through all three, and that's our front post double crochet two together over the previous post stitch and the next post stitch. All right. Then we're going to make two single crochets in each of the next two stitches. So those are those two single crochets. Remember we had between our post stitches. So we want to work two single crochets into each one of those. So go into the first one here for one and then two. And then the second one, go for one, and then two. Then we're ready to begin our repeat again. Let's do this again, because this is kind of a complicated one. We're going to make a front post double crochet two together. So we yarn over once, go around this post stitch right here, this next one. Stop when there are two loops left on the hook. We're just going to skip over this guy in the middle here all together. Yarn over, come all the way over to the next one. And then when we've got three loops left on the hook, we yarn over and pull through all three to finish the stitch. Then we find these next two stitches here in between our post stitches and work two single crochets in each of those. There's one and there's two and then we're ready to begin our repeat again so that is how we're going to finish off round 10 working all the way around until we come around when we get to the other end here we'll work two single crochets in each of those and then just join to that first front post double crochet two together that we made and then we'll finish off with our color d and we'll be ready for color e so i'll see you at that point of the pattern all right, our blanket is really growing and we've just finished round 10. You can see we have 120 stitches. Here when I came around, I just joined to the top of that front post double crochet two together that I made and we're ready to join our color F, which for me is the lilac colorway of Red Heart with Love. So to begin round 12, what we wanna do is join to any, um, excuse me, round 11. This is round 11, I misspoke there. This is round 11, color E, lilac. We're going to join to the back loop only of any post stitch with a double crochet. So 
any post stitch, that means any of these front posts, double crochet two together, is a great, another great chance to turn a little bit here and pick a new place to start. So we're going to find the top two loops of that front post, double crochet two together, and we're going to go under that back loop only. But like I said, we're joining with a double crochet, so you can use the standing double crochet technique again, or if you prefer, you can join with a slip stitch and chain two and not count it as a stitch. Or if there's another technique you like to use when you uh, join a new double crochet round, you can use that too. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this way. So I'll start with yarning over twice, again, to find that back loop only, and make a double crochet. And then I do like to mark that top of that first stitch so it's a little easier to come into. There we go. Hold on to that again so it doesn't go away. There we go. And then we're ready to continue with the rest of round 11. Now I am going to back loop only, uh, excuse me, double crochet in the same stitch, so just around that back loop again for a second double crochet, like so. Then I am going to back loop double crochet in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four, and then two back loop double crochets in the next stitch, which you can see here, we're back to our post stitches. So that, well, that way we know we're in the right spot. So two back loop only double crochets there. So that's basically our repeat. We work a back loop only double crochet in each of these next four stitches and then two back loop only double crochets in the top of the next stitch, which would be the post stitch. So that will keep you on track so that by the time you get to the end of round 11, you should have one, a total of 144 double crochets, all of course worked into that back loop only. So I will see you at the end of round 11. All right, and that's it for round 11, a very simple round of back loop only double crochet. We just need to remember to increase by putting a second double crochet in any of those uh, post stitches. So now we're ready for round 12, which is our final color that we use in this pattern, the tan color, color F. So for this one, I'm going to join to any second double crochet of a pair with single crochet. So first thing I wanna do is prepare my yarn on the hook. Since I'm going to be joining, oops, just don't drop the hook, or if you do, pick it back up, I guess. Let's put it a slip knot here on our hook and then we're ready to join with a single crochet. So then we need to find the second of a pair of double crochets. So again, this is a chance to spin a little bit and start in a new place. And we know that the pairs of double crochets are the ones that are worked into the tops of those post stitches. So we're going to be joining to the second of the pair. So the one, one over, the second one you made of those two pairs, or of the two double crochets in a pair. So we insert our hook under both loops, this is not a back loop only, and make a single crochet, like so. Then we chain one, skip the next stitch, and single crochet in the stitch after that. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the stitch after that. Chain one, skip the next stitch, and that's it. That's our repeat. It's just those three little things. Single crochet, oops chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one. If you've ever made the moss stitch, this should be very familiar, but this is really all we do for round 12. And this is the only thing we do with this tan color. So when I reach the end of round 12, I will just join to that first single crochet I made and we'll be done with round 12 and with our tan color. So at the end of this round, you should have 72 single crochets and 72 chain ones. So I'll see you at the end of round 12. All right, and here we are at the end of round 12. Just a row of single crochets and chain ones, and then we join to that first single crochet at the end. So to begin round 13, I'm going to join to the second chain one space made in the previous round. So I want to find that very first single crochet we made in the round. So there's the first chain one space, and there's the second chain two space. So I'll insert my hook there, and then yarn over with my new color and just make a slip stitch and pull it down tight. 
Then I'm ready to begin the crochet part instructions. So I'm going to start with a chain two, one, two, and a cluster right in that same chain one space. And these are the same clusters that we made before. This pattern is essential, essentially an 11 round repeat, rounds two through 12 are going to repeat uh, in terms of color and basic format, but we're going to have to change them just a little bit as we expand so that it can keep expanding and we don't end up with a bowl and we have a nice flat blanket. So from here we chain one and then we're going to skip the next stitch and cluster in the next. Like so. Then we chain one, skip the next stitch, and cluster in the next. And then we chain one and skip the next cluster, and or excuse me, the next stitch, and cluster in the next, and chain one and skip the next stitch, etc. And we will do that until we've got 11 clusters made followed by 11 chain ones. And then we're going to have our little increase. So I will see you as soon as we've got 11 clusters made followed by 11 chain ones. All right, so now I've made my 11 clusters and 11 chain ones. So you can see there's a chain one here after each of those clusters, including here at the end. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So after we've done that, then we need to cluster and chain one twice in the next chain one space. So this is going to be our increase. So we go ahead and put a cluster in there, like so. Then we chain one and then we do it again right back in that same chain one space. Another cluster and another chain one. Then what we want to do to make the next round just a little bit easier, we're going to put a stitch marker. So in the in a written pattern that's often abbreviated PM as in place marker, we want to place a stitch marker in the first one of these two chain one spaces we just made. So the one that's in between those two clusters that are worked in the same stitch that gets a stitch marker. So every time we increase like that, we want to put a stitch marker right in the middle, in the chain one space between those two. Then we just do the same thing again. We are going to cluster and chain one in the next 11, and then we'll have an increase and place marker. We're gonna work that all the way around, of course, then. Finish off, we'll have that chain one. After our second, we'll put a stitch marker there, chain one and then join to that first one, and that will be it for round 13. So I'm going to make probably one or two more repeats, and then we'll come back in and make round 14 together. All right, when you get to the end of round 13, you should have 78 clusters and 78 ch chain one spaces in between. That means you've got six chain one spaces that will be marked with stitch markers. Then we're ready to begin round 14. For round 14, we're just going to slip stitch into that first chain one space. So we joined to the first cluster made. So then we slip stitch into the first cluster there. There we go. Then we're gonna chain two and then work two double crochets in each chain one space. So one, two, and then we're going to work three double crochets in each marked chain one space. So that means we are going to skip over all the actual clusters and just work into the chain one spaces. We're also going to place a stitch marker in the center double crochet of each set of three. Now, as I said, those are only worked in the marked stitches or in the marked chain one spaces. So for now, we skip over to that next chain one space and work two double crochets jump to the next chain one space for two double crochets and just continue that all the way around except for whenever you get to one of those marked chain one spaces in that you want to work three double crochets and move that stitch marker up to the center of those three so that's all we do though for round 14 so that when we get to the end of this round we should have 162 stitches so i will see you when we get to the end of round 14. All right, so here we are at the end of round 14. You should have 162 stitches total, two double crochets worked in each chain one space, except for those ones that had a stitch marker, like this one right here. That one got three, and that stitch marker moved up to the center of those three double crochets. So then we join, and we're ready to begin round 15. All right, let's begin round 15. We're going to start with a chain two, and then work a cluster in that first stitch. And then before we 
can begin our repeats, we have to sort of split the first repeat a little bit. So let's work on that together. We're gonna chain one again, of course, because we've just made a cluster. And then I am going to make a cluster and chain one 10 more times until we've got 11 clusters and chain ones made. So I want to make sure though to skip a stitch in between each one. So I've got cluster, chain one, skip the next stitch 11 times. So I'll see you as soon as we've got that done. All right, so after you've clustered and chained one 11 times for round 15, you'll notice we're coming up to that first stitch marker and this is our first hint that something unusual is going to happen. We're going to start working our increase. So we're going to, we've got our chain one and we've got our skip one. So this is the next stitch we should work into. So we're going to go ahead and put a cluster right in that stitch. This is the stitch right before the stitch marker. Then we chain one, whoops, there we go. And then rather than skipping a stitch, we're going to work the next cluster right into that marked stitch. Like so. Then we chain one again, and we can ignore that stitch marker for now. They'll come up later again in our repeats when we get to these sort of repeats again, but for now we're done with those. So I'm just going to leave that there right now, and then I'm going to begin our usual repeat for this round that begins with the asterisk. So like I said, we split our first repeat a little bit. Our usual repeat for this round is going to be 12 clusters followed by a chain one and skip one before we do our increase. And that will be when we get to our next uh, stitch marker here. So let's go ahead and start on that one together. Now remember, uh, we're going to skip that one right there. So we go to the next one. We want to, here's our visual clue. We want to make sure that when we make our clusters and chain ones, we're working to the first of those pairs of double crochets we made in the previous round. So we'll make a cluster, chain one and skip the second one and go to the next one. I will do that now 12 times. So I'll see you after we've made 12 more clusters and chain ones. All right, so there's my marked one. So I know I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 clusters followed by a chain one. Got my stitch marker hanging out here. So I know it's time for another increase. Um, so I've got my chain one here, skip that one. And then again, in the stitch right before the stitch marker, I'll make a cluster and chain one, and then right into that marked stitch. We don't skip one in between, and that's what helps give us our increase for this round. And then of course, skip the next stitch and continue on around. You can see I've been cheating a little bit here for the sake of time. So I'm just gonna add a few more stitches and then I'll come around and rejoin and finish this round off with you so we can begin round 16 together. Okay, now as I mentioned, round 15 has sort of a split repeat there at the beginning. So I've got my increase there. You can see I worked the second cluster into my marked stitch. Then I skip the next stitch, work a cluster and a chain one, and we're ready to join to that first one. So while we had 12, well, if I'd gone all the way around, we'd have 12 in between each of those increases. That first one only had 11, this is the 12th. So now we're all set and we can join to the top of that first cluster made. And with that, we're ready to begin round 16. All right, so for round 16, we start again with a chain two, one and two, and then we're going to double crochet in that same stitch that we joined to, and then double crochet in the next chain space. And that little duo, double crochet in the next stitch and double crochet in the next chain space, we'll do six times total. So that would be 12 stitches, so that's two. Remember, we don't count that chain two, so there's three, four, five, six, and I'm just going into each stitch and chain space. So that's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And then we can look back at our instructions here and then it says double crochet in the next stitch and then two double crochets in the next chain space. So that's our little increase there and that is our repeat. So double crochet in the next stitch and the next chain space six times. So that's our 12 stitches and then double crochet in the next stitch 
and then two double crochets in the next chain space after that. So you can think of it as crochet 13 and then two in the next chain space. As long as you remember to work into each stitch and chain space, at the end of round 16, you should have 180 stitches, and that will be it again for color A, and we'll be ready to move on to color B again. So I'll see you as soon as we're ready for color B. All right, so in round 16, when you're all done, you should have 180 double crochets, and you can join and break that. All right, so to begin round 17, I'm going to be using color B, and I'm going to be joining with a single crochet, so I've got my slip knot already on the hook. I'm going to join to the back loop only of the first stitch of the previous round. So that's that one right here. I just go right in there with my hook, pull up a loop, and make a single crochet. Then I'm going to back loop only single crochet in the next stitch, and then I'm going to front post treble around the cluster in round 15 directly below. So that's that next cluster we come to. Then we're going to back loop only single crochet in the next three stitches. So that one's considered worked in two because we've worked in the cluster underneath it. We wanna skip over it because we're not increasing right here. We wanna come over to the next stitch and work a back loop only, single crochet in that one and the next two. And to help you keep you lined up right here, of these three, you should have one before and one in the stitch that's worked into the cluster and then one that's worked in the stitch after the cluster because then it's time to front post treble around the next cluster. Then we do that set of four stitches again. Back loop only single crochet, one, two, three, then front post treble around the next cluster. Like so. That covers, up, uh, covers us up to the point uh, where we end that first set of brackets in round 17 where it says back loop only single crochet in the next three stitches and front post treble crochet in the round 15 cluster below twice. Then we back loop only single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Then we front post treble crochet around the previous round 15 cluster. So whereas before, if we continued working the way we have been, we might come down here we're going to go back to this one and not skip it. So as soon as we've got that front post treble made, then we are going to make a back loop only single crochet in the stitch behind the post stitch just made. So it's not so much about how it lines up right here, we don't need to worry about here, but how it lines up on the previous row. So this was the stitch we worked into previously, then we worked a post stitch, so this would be considered the one we work the post stitch around in terms of skipping it, but we're not going to skip it this time. We're going to work another back loop only single crochet right in there. So if you flip it over, you can see hopefully every time, usually when we've got a post stitch, we skip the stitch behind it. We don't work into the top of that, top loop of that stitch behind that one. In this one, we're going to go ahead and work it. There will be no skip behind here. Then we're ready to begin our repeat that begins with the asterisks. It's getting kind of big, so I have to sort of turn it around here. All right, so we'll begin the part that starts with the asterisk. We back loop only single crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, then front post treble crochet around the round 15 cluster directly below, like so. Then we back loop only single crochet in the next three stitches and front post treble crochet twice. So let's do that together. One, two, three, front post treble. Remember to jump all the way down to that cluster, like so. And then our second round of them here, we've got one, pull up a little bit more yarn, two, three, then our second front post treble. Then we back loop only single crochet three more times. One, two, three. Then we front post treble around the cluster that was previous. This is where we don't skip. And then we finish off our repeat 
with a back loop only single crochet in that next stitch so you don't skip one behind that post stitch. Then we're ready to begin the asterisk again. So two more back loop only post stitch or back loop only single crochets and then another post stitch on around. So you should get a pattern like this where you've got a skip, skip, no skips, skip, 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 no skips on around. So I will work my way around sort of fudging it a little bit and I'll come back around and we'll finish off round 17 together. All right, so I've just about finished up round 17. And at the end of this round, you should have 192 stitches total. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up. I have finished off with a back loop only behind that last post stitch. So I'm ready to join. And I just wanted to show you this part so you can see when we end up there where we join, we should have a skipped cluster directly below. So after that, we're ready to begin round 18. So to begin round 18, I'm just going to slip stitch right into the next stitch, like so. And then I am going to chain one. And then we begin our repeat that will take us on around round 18. Half double crochet in the next three stitches. So that includes the one you've slip stitched into. So there's one, two, notice that second one is on top of a post stitch, three, and then I chain one, skip the next stitch, and begin the repeat again. So let's do that together. Skip the next stitch, half double crochet in the next three. One, two, remember I said two ends up on top of a post stitch there. Three, then chain one and skip one. Let's do it one more time. One, two, it's on top of our post stitch, so we know we're in the right spot. Three, chain one, and skip the next one. So I'm just going to continue that, doing that until I have finished my round 18. And I will see you at the end of round 18, where we should all have 192 stitches, including the chain one spaces. So when you go to count your stitches for this round, be sure you count those chain ones. Otherwise, you're gonna come up very, very short. So I'll see you at the end of round 18. All right, so we finished round 18 and we've got three half double crochets with a chain one space in between each grouping. And you can see those chain one spaces are right in between our post stitches. So we're ready to go ahead and grab color C again. Once again, I'm using the lettuce color for C. What we're going to do then with color C is join to any chain one space with a double crochet and then work four more double crochets right into that same chain one space. So essentially, it's a five double crochet shell worked into a chain one space. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and pick one back here to where I've sort of begun my cheating repeats to make sure I have enough to show you when we come back around. So again, I'm just going to pick any chain one space of the previous round and join to it with a double crochet. I showed you this move earlier, but again, if you need to see it some more, I do have a separate tutorial for that. After that join with double crochet, you can see I've made a second double crochet. I'm going to make a total of five double crochets all right into this chain space. So I'll just keep going right into that chain space till I've got five double crochets. And then I am going to work a front post treble crochet around the next round 17 post stitch. So that next post stitch popping up there, I'll yarn over twice and work a front post treble right around that. So if you'll remember our previous green round, if I pull that up, remember we had three double crochets and then a post stitch. We've just grown that because we've gotten bigger, because our blanket's gotten bigger. Now we've got five double crochets and a post stitch. And then we come over to this next chain one space, five double crochets again, followed by another post stitch. So that is how we will work up round 19. At the end of round 19 then, you should have 288 stitches total. So I'll see you at the end of round 19. All right, so when you've finished up round 19, it should look something like this. Five double crochet shells in between post stitches worked around the previous post stitches. So after that, you join, break, and we're ready for color D again. All right, now let's begin round 20. I've begun with a slip knot on my hook because I'm going to join with a single crochet, and I'm going to join to the center double crochet of any group of five. So we have all these groups of five here in the previous round. I just need to find the middle one, the third one of any of those groups, and join with a single crochet. So I'll go ahead and join to one of my first groups of five here, 
right in that center double crochet, insert my hook, and finish my single crochet. Then, let me straighten this out a little bit here so it's easier to see, I'm going to make a front post treble crochet around the next post stitch. So that's this one right here. So I'll make my front post treble. There we are. And then, because I've made two stitches, one into this stitch, this one counts as worked into this stitch, this one's going to be the next one. So let's flip it over so it's a little easier to see. This is where we made our single crochet. This is the stitch that even though nothing, no other stitch has actually touched it, it's going to count as worked because we just made a post stitch and we don't want to increase. So we're going to come to the next stitch after that and make a single crochet in that stitch and then in the next two. So the second one, you'll see, goes into the top of that post stitch and then one more. So we did a single crochet in the center, front post treble around the next post, single crochet in the next three stitches, then we're going to front post treble around that same post stitch. Coming right back to that same post stitch again. Oops, there we go. Work our stitches off two at a time here. There we go, or our loops rather. And there we go. That would be essentially our first repeat. So let's begin it again from the asterisk. We are going to single crochet in the center of this group of five. Then we front post treble around this next post stitch. Then we make sure we don't work into that next stitch. Oops. Make sure we don't work into that next stitch in the back, but that we go into the stitch right before the post stitch for a single crochet. Then the post stitch. Then the stitch after the post stitch. There we go, and then we're ready for another post stitch right around that one again. So that is our basic repeat. Let's do it one more time together. We find the center of the next group of five, put a single crochet there, post stitch around the next post stitch. There we go. Single crochet in the stitch before the post stitch, single crochet in the post stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and then yarn over twice to front post treble around that same post stitch. Like so, there we go. So those are the repeats for round 20. So continue those on around, come back around, join up to that first single crochet, and we'll be ready for round 21. All right, so as you finish up round 20, you should finish with a front post double crochet in the same post stitch as the previous one there, basically one full set, so that we can join right to the top of that chain one, or excuse me, the top of that single crochet, not the chain one. There we go, all right. Then we're ready to begin round 21. To begin round 21, we're going to start with a chain one, and then we're going to front post double crochet around the previous and next post stitches. So again, similar to what we did in the second blue round before. We will yarn over once because this is just a front post double crochet. Then we're gonna come over here to this previous one we just finished before we joined. And start our front post double crochet there. Stop with two loops left on the hook, yarn over again, jump over here to the next one. And then when we've got three loops left on our hook, we yarn over and pull through all three to finish off that stitch. Then we are going to single crochet in the next two stitches. So we want to, and this is kind of a little different, we've got a front post double crochet two together here. We're going to jump on over and just for, work these next stitches in the three stitches in between our post stitches. So in this first single crochet, we'll work a single crochet. In the second single crochet, we'll work another cro single crochet. And then in this third one, we'll work two single crochets. So one and two. Then we're ready to begin our repeat. So we yarn over once, go around the next front post double crochet. Yarn over again, start the second half here go to the next post stitch and yarn over and pull through all three to finish off that stitch. Then we jump over here to where we've got these three single crochets, make a single crochet in the first one 
a single crochet in the second one, and two single crochets in the next. One and two. So let's do that repeat together one more time. Yarn over, go around that next post stitch there, stop with two loops left on the hook, yarn over, go to the next post stitch, stop with three loops left on the hook, pull through all three, come on over to these single crochets, single crochet in the first single crochet, single crochet in the second single crochet, and two single crochets in the third. So that is our basic repeat, and I'll just continue that all the way around until I can join at the end of round 21. All right, and here we've got the finished blanket again, because from here the repeats are really quite simple. You can see right here, this second blue round, that is our round 21 that we just finished. After that, round 22 is color E again, which for me was the lilac, and that is just a simply a round of back loop only double crochet. You don't even need to increase for this one. Just work a back loop only double crochet in each stitch around. Then for round 24, we go again to the tan, and or excuse me, round 23, we go again to the tan color, and that is the moss stitch again. Single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, all the way around. So at the end of round 23, which is that tan row, you should have 120 single crochets and 120 chain ones. So after that, round 24 again begins our repeats. You can see here we've got another color A round. And for this round, color A, it's another cluster round, very similar to what we did down here when we worked into that moss stitch round, only in fact, I believe, yes, that one is even easier because there's no increasing again in this round. We just do a cluster in each chain one space, chain one, skip the next stitch. Cluster in the chain one space, chain one, skip the next stitch. Very simple for round 24, and that will give you 120 clusters and 120 chain one spaces. Moving on to round five, again, we're just, uh, excuse me, round 25, we are again working with color A, and for this one, we simply slip stitch into the next chain one space. So we slip stitched into that chain one space after that first cluster, and then we work two double crochets in each chain one space around. Again, no need to increase in this round. So at the end of round 25, you'll have 240 stitches. Round 26 is again a cluster round. It is a cluster, chain one, skip one. For 240 stitches total, or 120 clusters and 120 chain ones. So that's that round right there. Round 27 would be double crochet in each stitch and chain space around. Very simple. Double crochet in each stitch, double crochet in each chain space, on around. That's our last color A round for that repeat. And then we're ready for color B again. This one, of course, is a little bit different. Again, we have to space those increases out ever so slightly. So for uh, round 28, which is this color B round, sorry, making sure we're in the right spot here. Round 28, color B. We actually don't have to increase on this one, so we are going to work evenly for round 28. So we have a front post treble crochet in the cluster, and then after that, we back loop only single crochet in the next three, and then another post stitch. Back loop only single crochet in the next three, post stitch. Back loop only single crochet, next three, post stitch. Very simple nice and even for round 28. Round 29, we continue with our yellow B color, and for that one, it is the round where we chain one, we half double crochet in the first two stitches, then chain one, skip one, then half double crochet in the next three. So you might remember that from before. Half double crochet, chain one, skip one. Half double crochet three, chain one, skip one. Half double crochet three, chain one, skip one all the way around so that those chain one skip ones again end up right in between those post stitches. Then we're finally ready for color C in round 30, which is our green again. And you may recall we've got, this is very, very, very similar in fact to our last color green round. For this round we're going to have five double crochets in each chain one space, followed by a post stitch around the post stitch in the previous color. So five double crochets, another post stitch, five double crochets, another post stitch. I demoed that uh, when we did our previous color C round. For this one, which is round 30, at the end of this round, you should have 360 stitches. Now from there, we have a lot of repeats. Round 31 uh, would be our first blue round here, I believe. 
Uh, yes, that is right here. And that is a repeat of round 20. So those two rounds I just demonstrated in the blue, that would be same thing again here, and then same thing again here. So rounds 30, 30, or excuse me, 31, 32, on all the way up through 40, which I believe takes you all the way up to here, are exactly the same as rounds 21 through 29. Again, if you get the written pattern on mooglyblog.com, use the print friendly button, print it out, follow along with the written pattern. It'll help keep you on track as well, rather than just trying to do it auditorily here. So again, we go through round 40, then we get back up to round 41, which is color C, which would be our green color here. And that's going to be the same thing again. It just has to be written out because we work that front pose treble, um, the number of this row changes. But it's the same thing again. Five double crochets in the chain one space, followed by a post stitch. Five double crochets, followed by a post stitch. Easy peasy. Then we can move on to rounds 42 and 43, which are essentially the same as rounds 20 and 21. Again, we're just working those blue rounds just the way we have been. Then we've got round 24 here in color E. And this is, again, just simply back loop only, double crochet. The only difference for this one, because it's round 20, or excuse me, round 44, is that in the very first stitch of the round, we need to have two double crochets in that very first stitch. So I'm not sure exactly where on the blanket that is, but there is one spot where there are two back loop only double crochets worked in one stitch instead of one. The reason for this is that on this round, it takes the stitch count from 375 in round 43 to 376 in round 44. And we need 376 stitches to make round 45 work, which is our very last round, which is just like all our other tan rounds, single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet. Had to have an even round to make that work. So that's why we added just one more round, or one more stitch there to round 44. But other than that, most of these rows you've already done before. I've gone over them with you. I've certainly gone over the stitches with you. It's basically repeats with just a couple little tweaks here and there to make it work so it keeps growing as a big, beautiful blanket. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you'll need a USK hook or 6.5 millimeter to make this pattern. You'll also need Red Heart with Love, approximately 1400 yards. Now, I based my original on, uh, on the Water Lily colorway, which is really beautiful, but unfortunately I don't have a real pretty skein to show you as this is the last one I had left. But you can get an idea of how it looks in the skein. And this was that main multi that I used in this pattern. And I pulled, obviously, the other colors that I used for the pattern from this skein, the lilac and the iced aqua and the lettuce and the tan and the corn silk were all inspired by the colors in this multi. So you can, of course, take this idea and come up with your own colorway for your water lily throw. It doesn't have to be based on the water lily colorway, of course. There are beautiful colors of with, with love, lots of beautiful multis. This one I picked out is called Beachy, and I just went through my own stash and found some great colors that I think would coordinate really beautifully with this. And it would give you a different look for the water lily throw, but I think it would be another really beautiful option. And of course, you could pick any sort of combos you like. You'd go holiday you could customize it for someone's wedding colors or they de their decor or even school colors. And while I used six colors total, you certainly don't have to use that many. You could use just two or three and get a whole bunch of different looks. So I can't see wait to see what you all do with this pattern. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to Red Heart for sponsoring this pattern in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps you make your own water lily throw. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. And please don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the Moogly channel. Thank you so much for watching.